Good morning and welcome to worship at Christ Lutheran Church. We'll get started. encouragements uh, as you're preparing both so you're encouraged to have a bowl or other vessel of water that you can pour some water or splash some water dip your fingers make the sign of the cross however you would like to acknowledge It should be in the, the link should be in the comments section shortly. Uh, in the bulletin, you'll find the hymns and service music that you're welcome to sing along with at home. Uh, you're welcome to read any of the bold responses to prayers and readings, uh, as well as the Lord's Prayer and the Creed. However, you are able to worship best uh, from home while we're still separated physically in this time. Uh, there are also announcements in the bulletin. Uh, I will make more announcements after, uh, as we start worship after the prelude. In the time of the prelude, I invite you to prepare yourself for worship. Once again, good morning and welcome to worship at Christ Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Abigail, joined by our musicians Joel and Ellen this morning, as well as our assisting minister Sandy um, and our diligent volunteer Hans behind. With sadness and also joy at their entrance into God's loving embrace this week, member Larry Bowman and also uh, our So we encourage prayers and condolences to both Larry and Kathy's family at this time. Uh, we'll pray for them in our prayers as well. Our members of the congregation, especially our annual meeting, not in person, You should have uh, received instructions via an email about how to get into that uh, Zoom meeting with the link. Um, also a way to dial in by phone if you don't have internet or computer access. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a link to a recording of an informational town hall that we had a couple weeks ago with uh, Try to keep it be, but we'll 
meeting this year. I don't think I have any other announcements other than to start looking ahead towards Lent. We've got a little bit of time left, uh, but uh, if you have any great ideas that you want to share, So I invite you Blessed birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons and children, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Together we gather as one body as we sing, will you come and follow me? But call your name Will you go where you don't know And never be the same Will you let my love be shown Will you let my name be known Will you let my life be grown In you and you in me Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer and you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? Lord, your summons echo true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. Will you just come or go where your love and footsteps show? Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Glory 
to God in the people on earth. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest and Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the the Father. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You're welcome to be seated for the readings, first and second readings. The Old Testament lesson for the third Sunday after Epiphany is found in the book of Jonah, chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and everyone great and small Put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. No human being or animal, 
no herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. The New Testament lesson is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, beginning with verse 29. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the word as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Word of God, word of life, thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Join us in the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You're invited to stand in body or spirit for the reading of the gospel. And our gospel comes from Mark this morning, not John. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little bit further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. You are invited to be seated. So last week, I didn't preach on the text from 1 Corinthians, even though there was so much in that scripture that could have been unpacked and understood in its own context. This epistle, otherwise known as a letter, from Paul, is dense with instructions to this Christian community in Corinth. Again this week, we have a chunk of Paul's letter to the Christians in Corinth set aside this gospel text of Jesus following his disciples and the story of the prophet Jonah being sent to the Ninevites. And this all kind of makes me scratch my head. 
I find the scripture texts assigned by the lectionary, which is the three-year rotation of assigned texts, generally one each from the Hebrew scriptures, the epistles or letters, and the gospels. These assigned texts are sometimes woven together with a common theme and sometimes seemingly thrown together with no discernible rhyme or reason. Sometimes a preacher can pick up on a theme and touch on multiple points. And sometimes, as a preacher, I'm left scratching my head. Why are all of these texts on a single given day? I have found myself pulled in multiple directions, wanting to address all these different ideas and issues, yet ultimately trying to pick just one. At first glance today, there's little to tie these scriptures together. Maybe a fish theme between Jonah's big fish story and Jesus' declaration about fishing for people. Or maybe some general theme about following God's summons, reluctantly, as Jonah did, or immediately, like Simon, Andrew, James, and John. Or then there's this idea of time. Jesus proclaims the same message of John the baptizer, that The time has been fulfilled. And Paul urges the Christians in Corinth to remember that the appointed time has grown short. As much as I love Jonah, I feel like we can't keep ignoring Paul. So let's dig in there a little. Let's wrestle with his letter a bit. Like many female preachers, I have a tenuous relationship with Paul's writings. Some of you may love or despise Paul for your own reasons. His teachings, in the form of letters sent to various Christian groups around and across the Roman Empire, make up a sizable chunk of the Christian scriptures, what we call the New Testament. Some of these letters were no doubt written by Paul's own hand or by a scribe that he dictated his words to. Others were more likely written by his students or disciples, signed with his name, because these letters are a continuation of Paul's school of thought, even if not actually written by Paul himself. And most of these letters are foundational to our understanding of Christianity, of the church. Although there are several certain problematic portions. For example, just a few chapters from where we read this morning in 1 Corinthians, there's a verse that says, women should be silent in churches. Of course, in other writings from Paul himself, Paul praises the leadership of women. So what are we to do with some of these confusing pieces of scripture? The first thing that I try to do is to investigate the context of the verse, of the letter, of the recipients, etc. Who was talking? Who were they talking to? What were the cultural norms, and how do they compare with our own? How did people generally understand their world, and how do we? So this morning, as I listen to the portion of Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, and I read his instructions to abandon marriage, to avoid expressing or even feeling anything from grief to joy, and to reject all commerce, buying, selling, dealing with the world. When I read this, I notice that it's bookended with Paul's understanding of the times. He begins, 
I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. For the present form of this world is passing away. Paul seems to reference what we heard Jesus himself proclaim as he started the, his ministry, saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Although Paul, echoing Jesus, is talking about a special type of time, translated in our English version of 1 Corinthians as the appointed time from the Greek kairos, which is not an expression of hours, minutes, or days, but a specific time, a specific moment, unbound by hours and minutes, a specific moment in which God especially influences the world. Paul uses this kairos term, yet also seems to think that the world, including the other type of time, chronos, marked by the daily sunrise and set and trips around the sun every year, Paul seems to think that the end of all of that is imminent. Maybe tomorrow or the next day. Time is short. And he urges his followers to refocus on only preparing for that end. Yet here we are, roughly 2,000 years later. Every day we see the sun rise and set. Christians marry, have children, rejoice and grieve together, buy and sell to have what we need to live. It appears that Paul was at least partially wrong. And if Paul was wrong about the end of the world and whether there are reasons for women to speak in church, what does that mean for the rest of Scripture? Can we trust Scripture to be true? Well, it might depend on what you mean by true. Is all of Scripture No, it's not. Those who pass down the stories and teachings compiled in facts, the idea of fact that we use today. But is scripture true? Yes. Yes, we observe truth which transcends fact in the text of scripture in a similar way to how novels and fables, folk tales and poetry convey deep truth, even without being strictly factual. So when I read this section of Paul's letter to the Corinthians, I'm tempted to scoff at what I initially see as a misguided understanding. But when I open my heart to see how the Spirit is still at work in and through that text, I begin to wonder about all the things that I probably get wrong. With the best of intentions, what have I said or done which is based in a less than perfect understanding? If Paul, called by God to spread the message of Jesus Christ to the nations, could get something so wrong, what do I get wrong? What does the church get wrong? What do each of us get wrong? Probably, I hate to admit it, The other day, reading through comments on a Facebook post about local COVID numbers, people yelling at each other through their keyboards about how stupid or misinformed the other person is. Everyone trying to claim that they know the truth. There seemed
sin prefers. And now it can't all be factually true. True or not. And in the meantime, we have neighbors to care for as best as we can. So I might needlessly be wearing a mask whenever I'm in close proximity to others, but I make a choice to wear it out of concern for And I really hope that others will do the same for me. My heart was warmed recently as I visited a church member at home. And knowing that I'm pregnant and therefore potentially more vulnerable to this virus, she was willing to wear a mask in her own home. I think about how many other decisions I make each and every day in which I might be misguided or misinformed and if I stop, yet that us is called by God to do work in the world. We proclaim this every time we say the Lord's Prayer. We say, your kingdom come, God, your will be done. As Jesus followers, as Christians, we are called to do God's will. As bumpy and mistake prone as we are. And there does not ever seem to be an expectation of perfection in this calling. Andrew, Simon, James, and John abandoned their families and careers, seems pretty misguided. And I guess Zebedee, left with the hired men on the fishing boat, couldn't believe his stupid, misguided sons who abandoned him that day. They might be making the biggest mistakes of their lives when they drop their nets and follow Jesus. And yet to us, it seems like they were being faithful to God's call. Jonah was the reluctant prophet who tried to flee God's calling, who hardly And yet, God's message spreads through Nineveh and is met with repentance and God's mercy. Paul might have gotten things wrong here or there. Because even when we humans mess up, God's will is done. The way God plans. But God can take even our misguided attempts and transform them into signs and deeds for God's kingdom. All of this makes me wonder how truly marvelous this kingdom work would be if we could find more common ground, if we could cooperate and collaborate with one another in the work. No matter what, God continues to invite us in sometimes through the quiet voice of a reluctant prophet or through the prophetic voice of someone demanding justice. Sometimes through imperfect leadership and always through Jesus' instructions to follow God's way of mercy, justice, and love. So in the light of God's invitation, I invite us each into a place of humility, open to seeing beyond our limited perspectives, open to God's love, justice, and mercy at work in the world and at work in each of us, changing us for the good.
Thanks be to God. Amen. As we sing together, you have come down to the lake shore. Seeking neither the wise nor the wealthy, but only ask. Eyes kindly smiling, you call out my name on the sand. I my small boat now with you I will seek other seas you know full well what I have Lord neither treasure A love that's willing to go on loving, sweet Lord, you have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling, you've called out my name, on the sand I have abandoned my small boat, now I will seek other seas. You who have fished other waters, you the longing of souls that are yearning, O oh, loving friend, you have come to call me. Sweet Lord, As together Through God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried.
seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom. the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Your disciples committed to answering in the steps of your Son, Jesus Christ. O oh God, grant us the strength to shine your light of love, hope, and the promise of eternal life through all that we do and all that we say. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust to your care and guidance the leaders of this world. May your steadfast love and unending grace serve as a model for them. Together, may they find common ground to end hunger, disease, homelessness, violence, and social injustice. May they seek the fruits of your kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. Together, May we all strive for unity. May each of us become an instrument of your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, answered yes to your call. I shall not keep us moving forward. You are faithful in every aspect of our lives. For those who find it difficult to trust, for the sick, and for the bereaved. We ask that you bring comfort, strength, and healing to all those suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic. To Shirley, Jean, Keith, Les, Rick, Dave, Linda, Kay, Carrie, Earl Sr., Debbie, Riley, John, Lee, Keith. Kathy Peters, with your peace. One nation under God.
body. Others. Near me. From wherever you are, whether that's in your heart, in the comment section, on Facebook, through a text message or phone call or a note card. The peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Feel free to sing along. <laughs> we forgot to say that. <laughs> say again? I, I was telling everyone to feel free to sing along, okay. especially on the course. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to loves me yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me the Bible tells me so Jesus loves me he who died heaven's gate to open wide he will wash away let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. He will stay. Close beside me all the way He's prepared a home for me And someday His face I'll see Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me Yes, Jesus loves me tells me so. We are so grateful for your continued support of our ministry together, especially while our doors are closed. Uh, if you'd like to make an online donation, the link to our Vanco site will be in the comments section if it's not already there. You're also encouraged, if you'd like, to go to our website. The giving page has much more information about uh, options and opportunities to contribute financially. Um, your time and talent is always treasured as well. Thank you. We continue by singing together our offertory. Yes. 
Let us pray. Oh God, nourish us anew in your tender care. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we give thanks. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you bring us to the needs of others and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. We pray together in the words Jesus taught and teaches his followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. We close singing together. In thee is gladness. Yeah. 
securely and stands forever. Alleluia. Our hearts are pining to see thy shine. What can I say? says in worst distresses he his glory with heart and voices all him rejoices in him forever alleluia we shout for Thanks be to God. God.